Good morning and welcome to a gloriously sunny Alton here in North Staffordshire. Um, I welcome you to this Mass. It isn't the International Mass, what it would have been if we were in Lourdes in the underground basilica, but it's wonderful that we can gather here in the sunshine in sunny North Staffordshire. You'll recognise the backdrop if you've ever been to Alton Castle. Um, the castle there, St John's there, Solly just down the hill. I'm Father Paul Wield and I'm the spiritual director of the Canelm Youth Trust and I'm based with here in the Diocesan Youth Retreat Centre, um, also as well as being parish priest here in Alton. I'd like to say a special word of welcome to the young people of our Archdiocese, especially those that would have been in Lourdes this week with us. The faith of young people in Lourdes is intrinsically linked to service expressed in the care that they show towards our sick pilgrims. Today we are celebrating the Feast of St Augustine of Canterbury and that has been celebrated often in Lourdes when all the English-speaking pilgrims gather together for the celebration of Mass. But we know that Lourdes is a place of many languages, many nations and cultures. And so, as we celebrate today the missionary journey of St. Augustine, sent by Pope St. Gregory the Great to encourage the faith in our land, we pray for all those who are called to work as missionary disciples. That is, of course, all of us. Let's see you inside. Bye.
Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And so we come, just as we are, to celebrate this feast of St. Augustine of England. In case you're wondering, one of the reasons why we're able to celebrate Mass together is the fact that we've been isolating as our little lockdown community here at Alton since a week before uh, the government even made lockdown compulsory, so we've been we are able to celebrate Mass together for that reason. But you're welcome here to join us in our little lockdown community, as I say. As we gather, as we come to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we begin, as always, by placing before God our Heavenly Father those areas of our lives where we still need His healing and His forgiveness. We are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Who came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Who may Almighty God have mercy upon us. May He forgive us any sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Almighty God, who, by the mission of the Bishop St. Augustine of Canterbury, called the English people into the wondrous light of the gospel, grant through his intercession, we pray, that faithful to that same gospel proclaimed, we may strive to make known your truth and build up your church on the foundations he laid. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. It was our God who gave us the courage to proclaim his good news to you in the face of great opposition. We have not taken to preaching because we are deluded or immoral or trying to deceive anyone. It was God who decided that we were fit to be included with the good news. And when we are speaking, we are not trying to please men but God who can read our inmost thoughts. You know very well, and we can swear it before God, that never at any time have our speeches been simply flattery or a cover for trying to get money. Nor have we ever looked for any special honour from men, either from you or anybody else, when we could have imposed ourselves on you with full weight as apostles of Christ. Instead, we were unassuming, like a mother feeding and looking after her own children, we felt so devoted and protective towards you and had come to love you so much that we were eager to hand over to you not only the good news, but our whole lives as well. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations, acclaim him, all you peoples. Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. Strong is his love for us, he is faithful forever. Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. Deserves his wages. 
do not move from house to house. Whenever you go into a town where they make you welcome, eat what is set before you. Cure those in it who are sick and say, the kingdom of God is very near to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It was about this time last year in Lourdes when in my homily, I use the phrase, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And how it was my sincere prayer that this would never be the case with what happens in Lourdes. Gosh, so much has changed since then. And yet, I would suggest that those words are even truer. And that desire, that prayer, even more necessary now as we experience our pilgrimage in a very different way this year. I know Lourdes isn't everyone's cup of tea. Some people just don't get it. They shudder at the thought of large crowds, of liturgies that might not appeal to their tastes, of tacky souvenir shops or noisy bars, there are any number of reasons why people don't like it. And yet, I for one have always been utterly convinced that Lourdes is something you catch. It, it gets under your skin, it, it becomes part of you. For sure, there are places where the spirit of Lourdes looms larger than others. Certain parishes, certain families, certain Colleges and schools have great traditions of being part of our diocesan pilgrimage. And long may that continue. But not only may it continue, may it be built upon by others in other places too. Several times over the years I've tried to explain Lourdes to people. And to be honest, often they just look back at you with utter bewilderment. Perhaps this has happened to you. Someone from your school or family have asked you why you're going and what perhaps you're going to be doing when you get there. And when you say that you'll be praying, that you'll go to Mass, that you'll probably go to confession, that you'll look after the sick and the elderly, even if you throw in the fact that there's probably at least one daily trip to the rather wonderful ice cream kiosk on the bridge, they still look back at you with rather unconvinced eyes. It is so hard to put into words what the draw of Lourdes is. And yet, time and again, we see quite literally that Lourdes is the life support system of the faith and practice of so many, so very many of our young people. What they discover in Lourdes so often reconnects them with our Lord and his church. To Jesus through Mary, that saying which we see in the mosaic in the Rosary Basilica is quite literally the lived experience of so very many wonderful people who come to Lourdes. And I'm quite sure Our Lady truly delights in that. What may have begun as a I'll go if you go conversation in one of our schools has, through Mary's prayers and intercession, led to young men and women coming back time and again, year after year, as part of our Lord's hospitality with Kevin and Sarah as brancardiers or handmaids, experiencing, again, the value of service, or perhaps part of our wonderful, caring medical team, or even, dare I say it, as a religious sister, a brother, or even the priest of our archdiocese. Our Lady 
lady's invitation to Lourdes is part of an ongoing invitation that will lead us throughout our lives, should we choose to accept it, to places that we ourselves would never have dreamt of. Today's feast reminds us that there is much work to be done. You and I need con to continue that work begun by St. Augustine here in England all those centuries ago. So let us be invigorated and empowered by the Spirit of Lord and by the prayers of Our Lady, St. Bernadette and St. Augustine of England to do our bit in our time and in our place, to be missionary disciples of the Lord, bringing the gospel of Christ afresh to the people of our island home. We stand for our friends. We pray for the church. Though we are separated, we remember that we are still united in Christ and that our faith remains strong for when we are reunited again. We pray for our bishops, priests and deacons, that they continue to guide us, helping us to keep our faith burning brightly and continuing to inspire us through the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all the pilgrims in our diocese. We pray that they stay safe and healthy in these uncertain times, remaining strong in their faith. We pray for all those who would have journeyed to Lord's this May with our diocese. Though they may be apart at this time, they are joined in unity through the celebration of Holy Mass. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our schools, youth groups and young people. We pray that they are safe and receive God's blessing during these difficult times. May they see the power of God's love working through them and moving through their lives. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for healthcare workers, that they may receive the care, protection and support that they need. We pray for all those who they care for and that they may know God's powerful love. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for leaders and teachers, that they remain strong and receive God's guidance when making difficult choices and decisions. Lord, in your mercy. We ask our Mother, Our Lady of Lords, to lift our prayers to her son, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. With the moment of silent prayer, now let's place our own private petitions before the Father. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers, grant our requests. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The offertory is the part of Mass where we offer the gifts of bread and wine at the altar. As we offer up these gifts, which will be transformed into the body and blood of our Lord Jesus, prepare yourself also for this transformation. At this time, prepare your heart to receive Jesus, so that as these gifts will be transformed, so too will your hearts and minds. As the gifts are offered up here on our altar, pray in your hearts that you offer up yourself fully to God, offering up your joys at being here 
celebrating Mass from wherever you are at this time, and also offering up your sadness and disappointment as we are unable to be joined physically in Lords for this Mass. Bless to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Bless to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine and the fruit of the vine and work of human hands to become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Amen. As we proceed, let's make peace with the sacrifice and the peace of the Lord. Thank you. My brethren, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Bernadette, St. Augustine of England, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. We please to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, or the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Praying with him, living, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from it. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of
peace of the Lord be with you always. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be St. Thomas Aquinas describes spiritual communion as a loving embrace, as though we had already received Jesus. A reassurance that especially through difficult times, Christ is closest to us, working within us. Even though we cannot receive Christ through Holy Communion right now, let us take this time to transform our hearts and minds so when we do come face to face with him sacramentally, we have greater understanding of the gift of the Eucharist. As we make an act of spiritual communion, let us call to mind all the ways Jesus has been working and moving in our lives, even if at the time we weren't aware of it. By making this act of spiritual communion, we express fully our faith in Christ's real presence in the Eucharist, and we ask him to unite himself with us as we say, My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
could stand. As we rejoice at the feast day of St. Augustine, we have received the pledge of eternal redemption, O Lord. And we pray that it may be of help to us, both now and in the life to come. To Christ our Lord. It's been wonderful here to welcome you into what is essentially our home for our celebration of Mass this morning. We very much look forward to being able to welcome you back here to Sully and to the castle very soon, please God. Until then, please keep us in your prayers and be assured of ours for you and for all those you love. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.